Preservation Act. Start again. Uh, welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on Monday, July 29th. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. We are meeting remotely via Zoom as permitted by the town and state. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will appear on the town of Amherst CPA website webpage. Uh, I'm going to call now on committee members so that we can be sure that uh, we can hear them and they can hear us. Um, <clears throat> Bob's, Bob Saul? Uh, here. Robin? I'm here. David? Mm -hmm. Matt? Here. Doug? All right, present. And Michelle. Here. Uh, so thank you. Um, as with all our meetings, we need to have a minute taker. Uh, would anyone wish to volunteer to take minutes for this meeting? Well, I would guess it was my turn, although Matt, have you done it? Um, I have done it before. Well, I haven't done it this year, so. It's your decision, Doug. Well, I'll grab a uh, couple of pieces of paper and do my best. Okay. There will be a link recording all this, which can be quite helpful. So uh, thank you, Doug and Matt as well. Uh, but Doug gets the nod uh, from the waiting game. <clears throat> so we've called this, I've called this meeting uh, to, uh, to where all of us convened it based upon the town uh, and the school committee responding to our previous meetings motion where we asked them to uh, pursue the north south orientation and to come back to CPA to seek additional funding as needed as soon as possible. So they have responded accordingly. Uh, the After our prior meeting, um, the finance committee uh, had a meeting and then the regional school committee had a meeting and the at, I attended the, or watched the regional school committee meeting. They unanimously voted to uh, recommend the reorientation option 3C. And they actually uh, had a brief cheer after they've made their vote because I gather it's been a long process for them. So, um, the town and Doug Slaughter has provided a uh, <clears throat> proposal to us. That's why we're here. I'm going to go through our agenda, though, with the first item being the public comment. And so I'd like to inv invite any community members who are in attendance who wish to make a comment to please do so. We did receive three letters of notification. Uh, via email uh, from rep uh, town uh, residents, and hopefully all committee members have received those. But I'm going to go ahead and call on committee members, and uh, excuse me, on participants. And uh, I'll start with uh, Sarah Marshall. Sarah, can you hear us and me? Looks like you I might can hear you. Hang on, can I got to bring her in. There we go. So, Sarah, you're welcome to. Uh, I think, think I was already in the room. I don't know why I've heard your entire <laughs> meeting. Um, I'm Sarah Marshall, uh, Amherst School Committee and the Regional School Committee. Um, thank you for convening this meeting. I hope you will vote in favor of whatever the proposal is. But there, I could not find any proposal. I, I couldn't see a packet, or so I don't know actually what's being requested. Um, but I'm all for it and hope you will support it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sarah. Uh, Holly, you can check on that perhaps after the meeting. If there's something not, not listed, we could add it. Uh, the amount requested for those um, in attendance is a funding request of $800,000 for uh, the track and field project, uh, the reoriented, reorientated option 3C. Uh, I'm going to go in order that I saw the hands raised from 
participants. Uh, George Ryan, George. Good evening. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you, Sam. Um, I actually was able to access the packet, just FYI. So um, I did see the proposal. Um, again, George Ryan, uh, Dan Street in Amherst. Uh, I want to speak tonight as a 36-year resident of the town and as a father of two girls who uh, went through the Amherst uh, schools and are proud graduates of those schools and during those years uh, were athletes. And I think athletics was an important part of their education as it is for many young people in our community. Our town has a long history of excellence in sport and athletics, particularly in track and field. And tonight's proposal is one that I think is long overdue and I hope the uh, CPA committee will support it. Um, the reorientation of the field is, as we know, a more expensive option, but I think it's the right option. Uh, it's right for our athletes, for our sports teams. And as I think you all know, it's a key element of the 2019 Athletic Fields Master Plan. Um, so I hope the committee tonight will look favorably on this proposal. I'd also like to thank the Regional School Committee for bringing it forward and thank Doug Slaughter for expediting it um, uh, tonight. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, appreciate your comments. Uh, Maria Kapicki, if you can hear us, we welcome you to uh, speak to us. Hang on, it'll be one second. There we go. There we go. We good? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Maria Kapicki, South Amherst. Uh, first, I want to make it really clear that I support this project. It it has been uh, a while coming, and I think it's a really good thing. I am not happy with the fact that um, this has come to you for $800,000. The difference between the funding that is in hand and what is needed by the cost estimate is a little bit shy of a million dollars. Um, and uh, the finance director has had this information and has had the charge. He's been told for months and months and months to contact the other towns, CPA committees, as well as Amherst. And at this this last meeting, uh, that had not yet happened. So to my knowledge, um, the, those this is not a proposal has not been sent out to the other three towns that comprise the region. Um, and they had been slotted to give about $240,000 by the original planning and CPA funds, plus some additional money in quote other funds that Amherst has contributed and free cash as well. So I think it's a real problem that that has not happened. And to be clear, the regional school committee has been begging for that to happen for months. Um, the other thing that I think you need to know uh, as you look closely at this proposal is that there are a number of items that can be taken out um, for later uh, that are not critical to the actual uh, use of this as, as a track and field. Um, some items uh, for instance, the, the curb and the sidewalk along the Toon Street, that's town property rather than regional property. And there's, you can make a good argument for having the town uh, cover that separately. Um, there's fencing and paving that can be decreased. And I'm concerned that the latest information from the finance director uh, was counting on the, the contingency going down from 15% to 5% by the time Doesn't of construction yeah. and save, oh, sorry, Holly. Um, uh, so uh, counting on about $360,000 to bridge this gap, um, I, that is, I don't think is wise. The, we don't know what the bids are going to come in at and I don't think relying on contingency is a good idea. So I think that there needs to be, there needed to have been work done to really go through this project much more carefully and get that down. Um, and there should, by this point, there we should have secured meetings with the CPA for the other towns and with the, the to bring that to town meeting. And um, at least two of the towns are, we're planning on having a fall meeting anyway. And the third, I mean, I think, they, they would they would probably join in, but um, 
I would encourage this committee and whoever else can do it to really make sure that these balls don't get dropped and that that actually happens. Um, I don't think that Amherst needs to cover the vast majority. That, well, they probably have to cover the majority, but $800,000 is probably more than Amherst itself should have to cover. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria, for joining us. And thank you for sharing your thoughts on uh, this proposal. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to invite anyone else who may be listening or in attendance uh, who wishes to make a public comment to do so. We welcome your comments. We are glad to hear them. And uh, I'm not seeing any hands raised at the moment, but I'm going to wait uh, a minute or two just to make sure that everyone who wishes to speak has an opportunity. It's important and we do um, welcome your input. Not seeing any hands, uh, I'll ask one more time if there's any uh, one in attendance who wishes to make a public comment. Uh, now is the opportunity to do so. Please raise your hand. Sam, while we're waiting for that, um, I do see that Dave Zomack and Doug Slaughter are both um, Dave is a panelist. Doug Slaughter is in the audience. Did you want to? Um, did you want any sort of a presentation, or are we just going to do questions and answers? We will bring them into the meeting uh, shortly. You can bring them in now if you'd like. Uh, there will be. Uh, we will be listening to what they have to say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end the public comment portion of the agenda. Thank you for those who uh, shared their thoughts oh, with us. Wait, we just we just had a hand go up. Hold on, uh, Tony Cunningham. Uh, Sorry, thanks. Okay. I had I had raised my hand initially and then uh, lowered it after Maria spoke because she said uh, expressed many of the opinions I had. So I I just wanted to put it on the record because I did email it, but I'm not sure if the emails get shared publicly. So just plus one to what Maria Kopicki said. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, we did receive your letter, uh, but you of course are welcome to make a comment here as well if you wish to say something in addition to uh, ditto to what Maria said. Uh, and thank you for the letter that you sent. The It was shared with the entire committee. Thank you. They will, they will get added to the... Um... The packet they just came in late in the day today and i did not have time to get them but i will add the uh, three letters that we received to the cpa committee's um, website and in this evening's meeting packet okay so uh thank you again to all who uh shared their comments i will call the public comment portion of this uh meeting uh close it the next item on our agenda is to approve any outstanding minutes we have in our packet minutes from our last meeting, June 6th of 2024. Um, I'm not sure if anyone, everyone had an opportunity to look at them or not, but I'd like to invite committee members if they have any edits to the minutes that they wish to share. See a couple of hands raised, uh, Michelle. Um, just that my name and last name is spelled incorrectly. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I made a point to spell it correctly. It, it must have auto-filled it <laughs> again. I'm very sorry about that. That's okay. There's, there's no escaping it. <laughs> You're on the list. No uh, Bob. Um, only just one typo on page four. Uh, the question that begins, is there a benefit for all of the overall community? And just below that, the answer, it should be, from, not form. This is, uh, what page is that question on? Uh, it is It is one, two, three, the fourth question on page four. And the answer, we've been looking at this form, it should be from, That that's all. Okay. Just type yeah, it. I see it. Thank you. 
<clears throat> Any other comments on the minutes? Uh, okay, it seems that they're okay other than a couple of edits here. Uh, would anyone wish to make a motion regarding the minutes? I will move approval. So moved with the edits identified in the meeting. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, is there any discussion from committee members? I'm not seeing any hands raised for discussion. So we have a motion and a second before us. I'd like to call on committee members to vote uh, regarding approving the minutes of June 6th with the edits. Uh, Bob? Uh, aye. Robin? Aye. David? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Doug? Aye. Matt? Aye. I will vote aye as well. So the motion passes seven to zero with two members absent. Uh, the next item on our agenda is financial update as available. Uh, I'd like to uh, turn things over to Holly if she has anything she wishes to say or to provide us. Um. Okay. Well, I I didn't really <clears throat> do any financial update because this is going to likely be a borrowing authorization because we do not have any funds available. But the one thing that um, was asked is to take another look at the um, the debt schedules that we had looked at in the fall and spring. So if you give me one second, I will try to pull that up. And why is it not working? And so hopefully, let me just make it a little bigger here. So right now, there's still a few things that are up in the air. Um, number one being Can this be enlarged, Holly? I am That's a little better. Almost all my numbers are tiny now. Um the one thing <clears throat> that is still up in the air right now is the authorization for the Jones Library Special Collections. As everybody I'm sure is aware, that project has been put on hold for the time being. It may be going back out in the fall. It may move forward. It may not. Things are still a little bit up in the air. So right now, um, this was built into our budget for FY25 is to make the first payment, <clears throat> excuse me, towards the um, previously voted or previously wow. approved uh, $1 million project for the special collections um, at Jones Library. So that will likely, depending on if or when construction starts, that first payment may not be due until FY26 instead of FY25. If the project does move forward, if construction does begin, um, we may still make a payment in FY25 or we may wait till FY26. That's going to be um, to be determined at a, at a later date. <laughs> um, so, oops, this did not save my edit. So what I had done is um, added in another um, Amherst Regional High School track and field. So basically these numbers would just be starting in the next fiscal year. My edit did not save earlier today. I can take care of that in a minute. Um, so these are the previously approved projects. Um, this one is our, our last payment. We have a couple more payments here. And then um, Valley CDC and Bowsertown Road are, have really just begun. So these will be off of our books very soon. Um, and I'll, I'll add back in what it would look like here in one second. When you say these, Holly, am I correct that you're referring to the rolling green? The rolling green and the um, Kendrick Park. These ones, I don't know if you can see my mouse circling them, but these ones up here at the top are um, 
this is our last payment on Rolling Green, and we have two more small payments on Kendrick Park. Um, and then the, the active ones currently are Valley CDC for the SROs and Belchertown Road land um, purchase for affordable housing as well. Um, and so these two have really sort of just begun and these two have yet to begin, but are scheduled or thought that they would begin in fiscal year 25. And that, like I said, is still just um, sort of in flux right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Holly. I appreciate your sharing that with the committee and those in attendance. It's helpful to just see it and to also recognize that uh, some of those are coming near their end. Uh, Dave Zomack, I see that your hand is up. I'd like to call on Dave. Yeah, I was wondering, Sam, if Holly could also bring into the room Bob Parent. Bob is working with the town on this project, and um, uh, we don't have a representative here tonight from SLR, but Bob has been working closely with SLR the entire uh, development um, and, and due diligence uh, period. That sounds uh, that sounds very good. A good idea. Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> You're able to, Holly. Yep. Give me just one sec. Okay. So that'll just take a moment, I assume, for Bob to uh, join us. Um, the next item on our agenda is the proposal funding request track and field project. It's essentially why we're here. We did at our previous meeting have thorough discussions regarding the various proposal options that include option 3C, which we're talking about today uh, from the designers. We saw the full design proposals. And Doug, uh, thank you for your uh, submittal, I was, I was, and I assume everyone was able to see the delineations in your uh, slides, as well as the uh, cost breakdown. Um, I'd like to invite you and or whoever from your team, Bob and or Dave, uh, to speak briefly on the proposal, anything that uh, you think would be uh, important for committee members to be aware of that might have changed uh, from June. Um, I do see the dollar amount overall request. Uh, my assumption, which I assume is an assumption, that's a double assumption, <laughs> from members of the committee is that there's about $104 uh, million, $1, one million and like $40,000 or so gap between the full proposal and what's currently in place. Uh, but let me uh, stop talking and uh, let the team members speak a bit. So whichever of you would like to be great. Sure, if it's all right, I'll, I think I'll start. And, and then, you know, if, if Mr. Zomek or Mr. Parent want to join in, then then uh, they, they can. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a couple of things. The, the sort of shortfall between, you know, actual cash in hand and the, and the total project costs inclusive of, of design is, is um, uh, as was noted in the public comment, less than a million dollars. So that's correct. Um, you know, we had a fairly extensive debate in filling out the application about what the ask should be. Um, and, and thinking about, uh, you know, the, the context of and timing of things. I had not yet heard back from, from uh, the CPA committees in, in other towns. Uh, and I've, <clears throat> and I don't have any uh, firm answers as to whether they'll take uh, a proposal from us uh, off cycle or not. Um, certainly they're, they're um, considering it uh, as a possibility uh, and have given some, some indications of when their meetings are and that sort of thing. So just speaking to those other funding sources, um, uh, I believe interestingly, all three towns are, are likely to schedule uh, a, a special town meeting this fall, um, whether we can meet the deadlines and whether they wanna consider it for a, a consider a CPA funding off cycle is, is uh, within their, you know, is fully their decision to make. Um, we'll do everything we can to have applications in hand. Uh, they've sent me the ones that are, that are in place at the moment and I'm uh, beginning to work on those and get those in uh, really relatively quickly. 
Um, but when we when we set an amount for for the ask to um, to the town of Amherst, we were we were sort of striking a balance between you know uh, making sure to have as much uh, available and on hand uh, when we go to the bidding process, not knowing whether or not we'll have or won't have decisions from the other three communities to support the project. Also understanding there's a, a variety of of ad options uh, that could you know, lower the cost or or we can defer those to a later time frame for for consideration um and as you can see from the slide deck that that we sent to you as part of the part of the packet they list off a few things there's a contingency there mentioned at the end i don't I, you know i've been not thinking in terms of that being as flexible as maybe it is i i'm hopeful that the contingency shrinks uh over time but but other costs may rise as the design goes ahead so i didn't want to put too much into that but i do think there are some legitimate things that either can be alternates that we consider later or or consider uh, if we have funding in hand uh, when we go to bid. Um, and so part of the reason we asked for 800,000 was, was uh, to, to have more sort of in hand available funds to, to sign contracts with construction companies to, to move ahead as far as we can on the project. Um, but I think that, you know, the, the idea of how uh, we've been asking each of the four communities for funding, whether it be through our normal debt process in the regional schools or, or for our CPA funding has been uh, to utilize that same mechanism that we use in the regional schools, which is an apportionment based on uh, equalized property values or EQV. Um, that puts the, uh, that puts the uh, funding level for Amherst just, just right around 80%, a little less than 80%. Um, so the ASK of 800 is a little higher than that. Um, and so, <clears throat> uh, and again, I think I see it as a bit of a cushion for us in the short term. Uh, and again, it can be a circumstance where uh, it can be considered not to exceed. And, and therefore, if, if other funds are available from other sources, we can leverage those funds to, to, uh, to balance the, the burden between the four communities that are, that are participating. Um, um, so in in regard to uh asks of the other four communities and and i'm going to switch a um pelham a cpa a couple of years ago did did chip in a little bit for design work and we'll we'll leverage that a little less than twelve thousand dollars we're going to ask them for about another ninety nine thousand to to support the project uh, um leverett we're going to ask for about one hundred and seventy six thousand and shoots for about one hundred and thirty six thousand um i don't have a sense of of uh their capacity to make that kind of commitment. I don't know whether or not they'll take things off cycle or not. Um, so I think there's a lot of question marks about those. We're going to make the asks of each of those communities um, to try to get to a more balanced funding level. Uh, that would would reduce the need for members from the 800,000 that you currently have in front of you to something a little less than that. Um, but I think that that, you know, the ability to do it off cycle, the willingness of them to do it off cycle and the capacity of them to actually fund at that level or the willingness to fund at that level is all open questions we'll have to to work through this this fall. Um, and I think that, you know, we'll we'll do uh, literally everything we can to get the applications into those communities uh, as quickly as possible. Um, some have scheduled meetings in August. Um, uh, some do not, but but um, they may take up a meeting if if asked. Um, again, it's their prerogative as to whether they choose to or not. So, so we can be uh, as uh, hopeful as we can, but we can't demand. I think would be the way to describe it. It's their it's their funding and their CPC or CPAC, depending on the town, um, and they set their own agendas and and uh, take projects at the at the rate which they choose to. Um, I think otherwise the project is, you know, the, the school committee's, you know, looking forward to, to a reoriented uh, uh, track as a project. And I think we can do it even under, you know, sort of, um, you know, challenging funding circumstances. We can, we, can, we can make it happen. It may end up being more staged than we'd like. We'd rather do the project in one fell swoop. I think that's cost effective and, and also just gives us a better project from the, from the start. Um, but we'll see what each of the committees has to say about their their ability to fund and their willingness to. Um, so I think I'll I'll pause here and see if Dave has any other comments he'd like to make. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Dave Zomack, I see uh, you've got your hand raised. 
Sure. Thanks, Sam. And, and thanks, Doug, for the overview. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, I, I think Doug, Doug covered um, most of the ground that, that needs to be covered tonight. I guess what I would add, it just in, in a little bit different wording is, as we as we pulled our team together with with Bob Parent and Doug and myself and and Kevin from SLR, uh, the way we came up with that eight hundred number was really from a conservative standpoint. Um, it's it's um, you know we're balancing a lot of factors here. Number one, we really had a strong sense that we 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 needed to get before you in the month of July. And here we are, you know, just just barely making that, and we appreciate you coming together. But our concern was if we if we lost July, uh, we we might not have time to get you all together. Um, I've been in touch with the um, with the president of the council, uh, Lynn Grismere, and I think Lynn would, uh, depending on what your vote is here tonight, they would be willing to take this up mid fall, which gives us a little more time, as Doug said to um, work with the three towns, Pelham, Leverett, and Shutesbury, get those asks in, and hopefully at least have um, a preliminary meeting with them and or get on, if they're willing, put something on their, uh, their warrants. So the 800 number was conservative. We fully realized, and I listened to some of the earlier comments, we, we, we've talked about this at previous meetings. There are some things that could be removed from the bid. They could become alt ads. Uh, they could be picked up by other sources. But our sense was this is our last shot at, if you will, Amherst, um, um, Amherst CPA. We did not want to come in with a low number and and hinder our, our, our bidding process late December, early January. So we, we came in with a little higher number. And I think it's a uh, it's a, as Doug said, a not to exceed number. Our hope is that through the asks of the three other towns, some creative uh, reworking of, of the proposal. Uh, and yes, the possibility and our hope that the contingency comes down from what it is now, which is I think is over $500,000, uh, all of those factors will contribute to us not needing the full 800,000. But we couldn't come in with an ask, say, in the five or the or the sixes, because we simply don't know what is going to come in from Bever Pelham, Leverett, and Shutesbury. So it was a conservative ask. We realize it's a bit of a stretch. Our goal in this project is not to utilize the full eight hundred thousand dollars, but we had to ask for a number that we thought could get us to the bid um, uh, late this year. So I'll stop there. I don't know if uh, our, our team member, Bob Parent, has anything to offer, but that's those are my comments. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate your uh, sharing your thoughts and perspective. Uh, Bob Parent, uh, would you like to make a comment or share any thoughts? Uh, certainly, just one short comment regarding the retainage. We are not suggesting at this moment that the retainage get released. Uh, typically, what happens as you go through the design process, there are less and less uncertainties as you get to the final point of producing biddable documents. And then it's typical at that point that you then do an updated cost estimate and reduce the retainage to 5% going into construction for a project like this. Um, we're pretty far advanced right now, but we haven't eliminated all the uncertainties and therefore we're not recommending that that contingents be released at this or re reduced at this moment. Uh, thank you, Bob. That's uh, helpful to me. Uh, <clears throat> I, and thank you all for sharing. I, I'm sure that uh, committee members have some questions and I think it probably makes sense for us to go right into that because we did uh, see the previous proposals and the very specific uh, documents that were provided here with the delineation of the expenses. And I'd like to open up the discussion to committee members who have anything they wish to ask. Uh, Bob Saul, I saw that your hand was up earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, if... yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dave answered my question pretty thoroughly about um, the other three towns uh, considering the proposal in the fall. I guess maybe the only 
minor tweak to that question is, is there any, and this is just my own experience, is there any incentive in this circumstance for these other towns to adopt sort of a free rider mentality? It's just my my cynicism, I guess, coming uh, to play here. Is that directed at anyone in particular? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I know Dave is uh, traditionally very honest, so maybe that's who I'm directing the question to. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Bob. I appreciate your confidence in my honesty. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I really, I, I, I don't know. I. I would like to think that that our three towns in the regional system would all feel some obligation to step up to the plate here with us. You know, we are we are as Doug said, you know, we are depending on what Amherst chips in in total, we are clearly at our 80% and we might go over 80% and yes this facility is in Amherst and there are some advantages to Amherst residents uh, in terms of proximity and all of that. But, you know, um, I think Pelham, Leverett and Shutesbury, they have to value the, you know, the, the, the resource that we're bringing to, to their students. Um, and we also pivoted a long time ago away from one of their main concerns that was articulated by those three towns which was uh, artificial surface. So we mm -hmm. pivoted away from that into a, a grass situation, a natural grass situation, a field. And we also, through SLR, came up with a way to build really the main field, an eight lane track, and then a field that will not be as good as, we're, we're not saying it will be as good as the, the field uh, within the track, but another field to the West. So leverage uh yeah I, you know i think we all worry a little bit if amherst steps up and says we'll cover you know a higher percentage does that disincentivize leverage pelham and shootsbury i hope it doesn't because i think they need to recognize this will be a regional resource for the next 40 to 50 years for their students so i know doug works a little bit more closely with those towns so he may have some other comments but that's my kind of taking the high road. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Would you if I added a little bit to that? Yes, sure. Yeah. So in previous conversations, we've 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 gone to those other communities and and talked about this with them earlier. You know, pandemic wasn't our friend in any way, shape, or form relative to that, and and interfering with process and and progress on this. But but I think you know generally has been received and and considered carefully by each of the other towns in previous sort of versions of this. I think, um, you know, I think we're also, the other questions that are raised are sort of what are we buying with this? And I think where we are from a design standpoint at this point is a little more precise than it's been in the past. So I think that gives a little more comfort to, to the other communities as far as what's uh, what's their dollar really starting to buy. We've got a little more clarity on, on the project itself. So I think that's helpful. Um, but I think broadly speaking, they've been, you know, appreciative of the project and and uh, and open to the idea of it. You know, what that means when they get to town meeting is a different question. But but I think their their CPCs have certainly entertained it with with you know care and 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 uh, you know in open minds. I think um, so. I, I, that's that's the most I can offer at this point. I think. Thank you, Doug. Um, Doug Marshall. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Sam. I, I guess I just wanted to ask, um, I'm not actually clear on the exact math and whether it's more or less than 1 million. Uh, when I look at the numbers that were stated in the uh, packet, they added up to 3.368 million. And, and then there were two numbers for the total construction project cost of either 4.4 million or 4.16 million. So if I'm not sure whether I should be subtracting the 3.368 from 4.4 or from 4.16, and that maybe is what I need to know. Um, 
any awareness on those differentials, Doug or anyone? I would, I would have to defer to Doug on those. So yeah, <clears throat> so let me just uh, clarify a little bit, and and so the, the glasses on so I can read the numbers clear, carefully. So on the on the um, the slides that that were were attached with the with the application, the 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 second slide has the sort of detailed list of things. Uh, there's a total a subtotal that's that's uh, you know three point four and changed, and there's a couple other things, inflation estimates, contingencies. I think the way to think of it is this following. 4,160,000 is the uh, construction cost inclusive of, you know, all estimates of, of contingency, inflation, et cetera. There's also design fees that we have of 254,200, and that's where the total project cost, so design and construction is currently estimated at $4,406,015. And so uh, our, our current funding level, um, you know, secured funds from, from each of the communities is, is at uh, 3.473840. Um, so I think that you know, it's been a number of numbers uh, floated around. I think the key thing here is the total project cost, as we understand at the moment, inclusive of contingencies, is the 4406000 Fifteen dollars, um, and that includes the design because you still have to pay for that. It's still part of the total project cost. Um, I think some earlier versions that wasn't included. That design cost wasn't in there, and so it it kind of created a little bit of confusion for myself included. I I made some mistakes relative to that, so I, hopefully that'll be clearer moving forward. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Doug. Uh, I understand. Uh, to summarize, the differential is primarily due to the design fees, uh, which get added to the construction costs, and the net amount remaining is a uh, little bit over or a little bit under, right around a million dollars. Um, Matt King. Yeah. Well, based on the numbers Doug just gave, I think the difference is around 930000 Yeah. So um, one question I had um in the uh that we haven't talked about yet today is the hurricane boosters so in the uh, pr the the request they've um promised to give 104,840 is is there any initially like years ago i think they were hoping to raise more than that is there any hope that they could raise some more so they did or, or how, where they did are they at Right, uh, if I may send. Certainly. All right. So, uh, so they did give the 104 840, I believe it was. Uh, they did give that funding to us, um, and we are um, leveraging that to to pay for for some things at at present, uh, because that's cash in hand, literally in the bank, as opposed to borrowing, which we haven't done yet on the project. So, we we have been utilizing some of that funding. Whether or not they're willing or able to do more fundraising, I don't know. I think the the last uh, you know sort of correspondence from the from the hurricane boosters to the school committee was was uh, they were going to need to take a break from from fundraising for a bit. Um, I think if we get uh, further along in the project, and there's something specific that that might be able to be funded from fundraising. Then that's certainly an opportunity to go back to them and ask uh, if they'd like to do some more fundraisings. I think it's easier to, you know, raise funds when you have some specific thing you're asking for. So if it's lighting or if it's bleachers or it's whatever, pick a pick a, uh, a feature, um, it gets a little more targeted, a little easier for them to do it. Um, but like I said, the last last correspondence to the school committee is they were going to take a little bit of a break. They've been spending a fair amount of time and energy, um, uh, you know, around around the project and and with the switch to uh, a natural surface uh, for the interior field. I think that that shifted their ability to provide some of the, the resources. Thank you, Doug. Um, Dave Zomack. Yeah, just to, to add a point or two on that, 
Yeah, I think Doug, I, I think he summarized it well. I, I think they do need a little bit of a break. They've got some other priorities going, but I I I believe from from at least some discussion I've had with some of the boosters that, you know, if the project, you know, not if when the project gets launched, we we get under construction if there are some things, uh, be it finalizing the lighting or you know bleachers or whatever features that we may not have the full funding for i think we could certainly approach them and you know i did i want to be perfectly uh upfront that when when the community switched from an artificial turf surface to a grass surface um the boosters lost uh, a tremendous amount of pledges and uh, potential donors so that was a pivotal moment and um, it took a lot of wind out of their sails and we owe them a debt of gratitude for raising over $100,000 and keeping that in the pot. But when we, as a community, um, went in that different direction, um, many of their pledges uh, were withdrawn. Um, I, I did just want to also emphasize that I think you know, ultimately, whatever recommendation you make on the project, it does go to the town council. And so it does give us, you know, and, and again, I'm not trying to delay, delay, delay. But as Doug said, we are we are going to apply to the other communities, to their CPA committees. We are going to do our very best to get on either fall town meetings or spring town meeting um, warrants. Um, but it does give us a little more time because I think the council will have very similar questions uh, that you are raising tonight is, is 800,000 too much for Amherst to, to, uh, um, to handle on this? Is, is that too, too large a percentage uh, for the project or not uh, coming from Amherst? So um, it does give us a little more time to get a sense of what the other three communities can do for us and can they can they come to us with some funding and at least show commitment to the project thanks well, thank you dave uh, michelle thanks sam um so i i appreciate the uncertainty of not knowing what's going to come from the other towns and having that cash in hand for the schedule and with that um I'm looking at the line by line items in the budget, and I'm wondering if things can be shaved off reasonably to just bring that 800,000 down and put, just take the project more simply and um, retain some certainty without the other town's CPACs. And um, some of these items are things that we've discussed at CPAC uh, recently or previously. Some of them were raised tonight and some of them I can see as being easy to remove or unnecessary. So in total on this spreadsheet, there you know, is upwards of half a million dollars of savings uh, based on all the items. So for example, football goalposts. So this is a soccer field and the, the football players do have an alternate field. So is that necessary? Um, the lights, we've talked about that, just having the posts and deferring the lights, the LED lights, that was something CPAC talked about. Um, raised today was the um, sidewalk and fencing, the fencing minimization and the sidewalk, that's another $100,000. Um, the ball safety netting, I'm not even sure what that is, is sounds like it might have to be replaced fairly frequently anyway, but is that for soccer balls to not go into the track? I don't know. So that doesn't seem necessary. I don't even know if I've seen that before. Um, and then, um, I don't know, contingency that that's not my wheelhouse, except other, you know, above 10% is gen generally that seems high, but so anyway, all of those together, that's over $500,000. And I feel like that those are all really reasonable sounding to me to bring the project down but also have some certainty going forward without the other towns chipping in or knowing what they're going to chip in. Thank you, Michelle. Um, other committee members. <clears throat> I, I have a question for Bob Parent. Uh, when you were discussing the contingency, Bob, uh, you referenced that it's good practice to not assume any savings in a 
shrinking contingency until you get closer to construction because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but I guess, and I don't know if this question is for you or for uh, for Doug. What what occur, what would occur if there was a shrinking contingency that came to fruition as the project was about to start? What does the the team do with those funds if the contingency shrinks and actually um, doesn't need to be? utilize because it's a five percent or so is that just the and let's just say the funds sitting there are those funds then proportionally returned in other words if the if the project comes in under budget i guess is how i would say it what what would occur with the different awards any any thoughts on the impact of that and i recognize bob what you said is you can't bank on that I mean, we don't know. Those contingencies might all be at the 20, 15 percent. We don't know yet. But uh, Doug, Slaughter? I'll, I'll offer a couple of things and we'll see if if, if Bob may, may want to offer some additional comments. But so so one thing that can happen is as you go through the process of design, part of what makes the contingency straight, shrink is because you become much more confident in the estimates of the costs. Um, you, you know, you learn more. I mean, we're going to be digging test pits in a few weeks about uh, and that'll you know impact our, our choices around some of the work we have to do and, and give us much better numbers. So, so you may see in, you know decreases in the contingency, but increases in some of the costs of some of the other things. I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, uh, but that's one thing that can happen. The other thing I think, just to your other point, is that you know we have uh, the capacity to spend, and I think that you know up to whatever has been appropriated, um, we're not necessarily compelled to spend. Uh, so I think that it's on us as good stewards of any money that we're given, whether it be borrowed from, you know, uh, and paid or, or through CPA, that we have uh, some, some clear uh, idea about how we go about uh, returning or not utilizing funding um, if, we are, if we're under the available funds that are, that are authorized to us. And I think there's one of the key things we haven't talked about with anybody really at this point, because we, we're still in the process, is we're going to need to create what's called an intermunicipal agreement, which is essentially a contract between each of the four towns. And one of the pieces of that puzzle will, will likely be if costs come in under, under uh, funding, um, what is our expectation of use for that remaining uh, resource? Do we not use CPA money? Do we not borrow? Um, you know, the nice thing about CPA is you get some state uh, support. So that's a, a little less uh, burden on the towns themselves. Uh, the actual cost to a community is a little less for CPA dollars than it is for the tax appropriation, which is going to be paid on the on the borrowing. Um, so I think it, you know, I think those are those are great questions. And I don't, you know, I don't have an answer for them right at the moment. And, and I think we we do want to be thinking in those terms if we if we have capacity. Um, because I think, it, you know, as I said, if, if we are in the fortunate circumstance where the, the resources that are available to us for the project uh, exceed the, the costs, um, you know, I don't think, uh, I certainly don't have any, any sense that, that I want to go out and buy more nice things. Um, that wasn't the intention when coming to each of the communities and asking for the funding in the first place. So we're not going to just, uh, you know, have our expenses rise to meet the income. Um, so we want to be thoughtful stewards yeah. of, that, of that funding. Um, but I, you know, and, and I think that, you know, that's a constraint that community preservation, uh, could make as, as far as their, uh, their appropriation and the, and subsequently the town council's appropriation to say if they would prefer, um, that, you know, the CPA dollars be preserved relative to other funding sources. That's a, you know, that's to my mind, an, a, a legitimate constraint that you could as a community Preservation Act Committee or as a town council that could place on that funding uh, if we come in under under uh, total about uh, total authorized funding. Thank you, Doug. Um, I am aware that uh, not all committee members are able to uh, stay here for the full meeting. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can get to committee deliberations on this relatively soon. Uh, but I do have one question myself. I, I don't know if other committee members have it uh, for the team. And, and, and it's this. If if the um, funds in hand, let's just assume CPA, Amherst votes a particular dollar amount, whatever that might be. Uh, if those funds are less than 
the needed amount. Do the bid alternates still get bid? In other words, must the funding, can, can the team, if there's a $150,000 shortfall, hypothetically, can the team still bid with, for example, a chain link, link fence as a bid alternate? Or must you have the full 4.4 million to, to have, in other words, At what point can you do bid alternates, I guess, is the question. My understanding is that you can bid them without the funds, but you, you want them um, because it's a desired part of the project that are that makes sense to do. But am I asking the question clearly? I believe so. I can jump into that. And the sure. reason we're put forward the bid alternates is to prepare for that event possibly happening. Yeah. So we would structure the bid such that there's a base bid and then have the alternates. We the the district cannot sign a contract for any amount greater than um, it has available in funds. So the yeah. goal would be to have the base bid as a minimum come within the available budget, and then subject to uh, budget availability, be able to award uh, some or all of the alternates. And they need to be structured in a priority and awarded in that priority. We can't pick and choose after the fact. That has to be identified to bidders in advance. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, I'd like to, uh, Bob Saul. I, yeah, I, th I think Doug's last point, I don't want it to go by that we, we might in our motion to approve, put in that um, coda, if you will, that we, would like to see the CPAC funds preserved as they can be. I'm not sure quite how we phrase that, but I thought that was an interesting addition. Thank you, Bob. Uh, comments from other committee members? For uh, Doug, Bob, Dave, Michelle. I just think 800,000 is too much. <laughs> I mean, flat out. I don't, I, I just, um, like I said, I understand the uncertainty with having the cash in hand, but I feel like there should be more deliberation about discluding some of these, even I understand the structure of the bid alternatives, but, um, you know, looking at that debt service, we're really whittling down everything. And I would say that if we do move forward with something like this, that there'd be some kind of assurance that it's, you know, can, you know, last resort and based on whether or not we get some funding from the other towns. Uh, Matt, Ken. Yeah, I guess I'm sort of getting toward deliberation here. Um, my thoughts coming into this were probably into this meeting were pr probably pretty similar to what we heard from um, Maria Capecchi and uh, Tony Cunningham. Um, and my mind has been somewhat put at ease by uh, the testimony from the the town staff and and Bob about the process you're going through here that um, we're trying to put together enough money available to get it done while also going after additional funds from the towns and um, looking for um, uh, some, some, well, the town council coming back later and hopefully approving a smaller amount than what we approve here. Um, now, I guess it, it's up to this committee to decide whether that process is going to make sense to us. Um, it's kind of making sense to me. I'm also somewhat sensitive to what Michelle is saying. Um, as far as I've done the math, um, from the, the difference between the, the funds available right now and the, the total um, request is around 944000 and then the bid alternatives, as listed in the spreadsheet, add up to about six hundred thousand. So um, there could be, I mean, eight hundred thousand gets us a long way toward everything. Um, we could, I don't know. I guess it's up to the committee to discuss whether we should approve eight hundred thousand or approve a lower number and put more pressure on other funding sources to come through to get the full thing done. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Dave Zomack, I see your hand is raised. Is there something that you'd like to add? Yeah, Matt kind of summarized, I think, what I was thinking. I think as I look at some of the alternatives, and, and I might turn to my colleagues on the on the team, particularly Bob Parent, um, the one that stands out to me is lights. We have we have spent a lot of time in previous meetings talking about the lights. This idea that we would we would put in the infrastructure for the lights, um, you know, uh, and and make sure that is there. But one option would be to, you know, basically not do the lights even in phase one and do it in a future phase. And you might have a, a track and field without lights for a year or two. We came into this thinking that's not the ideal, but I am sensitive to what Matt and Michelle are saying because I think our team struggled a, a bit, honestly, with coming in with a number at 800,000. So, you know, um, I could see this group doing a couple of things. One is saying, okay, as Matt just just said, uh, you support the eight hundred thousand, but with strong, you know, strong recommendations and 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 guidance to try to lessen that number by by get you know by by working with the three hill towns for as much money as possible, or taking a number you know voting a number less than eight hundred and and having us basically pick out one thing like the lights and saying that has to come in a either if we're if we're fortunate and get all the funding it could happen if not it might have to come back to cpa and the other towns in a future ask in a in a future year and bob i can't re recall off the top of my head the the breakdown of infrastructure for lights versus the poles and the the leds and all that do you recall or doug I don't recall the the number that we're showing as a potential alternate uh, is the lighting itself of three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that would be you put in everything below ground in the foundation, and then you come back at a later date and install the actual LED lighting and and the poles on on top of the foundations. Yeah, the groundwork was a hundred and I think about one hundred and fifty thousand, roughly. So Thank there's you. A, there's a potential delta there of. 300 plus or minus that you know could be shifted if we don't reach our total could be shifted to a future year we could come back to cpa we would work with the boosters if this group was not comfortable at the 800,000 i just i'm not comfortable kind of uh cherry picking different things and you know it's just like i would rather almost pick one thing and say, hey, you know, it's it's that thing. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, thank you. Uh, Doug, Marshall? Yeah, I guess one other way to think about it is to uh, say that we would be willing to fund the base scope as listed in this presentation, but not the alternates. And if somebody else wants to fund the alternates, great. But that CPA money would really only be uh, applicable to the base bid. And if the base bid comes in and you need the whole 800,000 for to get to the base bid, then you spend then you you have the money from us. If you if if the the if it if it doesn't or if it comes in lower, the base bid comes in lower, then you you don't get additional money from us to go get the uh, the additional items that are listed as alternates. And to me, that's I mean nobody really knows what it's going to cost. I mean we all found that out with the library. Um, we had you know everybody had a whole bunch of alternate or a, a bunch of estimates from. You know, from from the designer, from the owner's project manager, they have all had their own cost estimators, and lo and behold, it came in seven million over. 
So nobody knows what any of this is going to cost right now. And so I'd rather be basing a decision on what are we willing to buy? What are we willing to pay for rather than any particular number? Thank you, Doug. Um, other committee members? I have, I have one. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Excuse me. I was just going to say that I can get on board with that Doug proposal. That you can or cannot? I can. I see. I okay. like it. Doug, is your hand raised again? I knew. Um, when I looked at this and I hear the team members, Dave and others, indicating the uh, uncertainty and the desire to have the full project bid, uh, I tried to look at this in terms of what, what's approximately 80%. Uh, I see that Doug indicated he's going to ask uh, the other towns for approximately 411000 between Leverett Pelham and Shutesbury. We don't know as a committee what they will vote for, but he plans to ask for that dollar amount, whether it's done in the fall or whenever. Uh, I looked at the overall 4.4 million and subtracted what I thought was 1,040,000 and came up with a difference. I don't know if my calculations are correct or not, but if we were to look at the total CPA dollars that would be spent, it's around... 2 million uh, or thereabouts, 2 million and change. Uh, and if Amherst was going to spend 80%, would contribute 80% of that, it'd be around 1.6 million. So I calculated that 1.80% CPA contribution for the full, full project would have been around. 637 some odd thousand or so for Amherst, 637 to 650, give or take, uh, if Amherst was contributing 80% of the full project. I'm a fan of the project. I want to see it get done because I know it's a now or never deal. Uh, the ad alternates are a nice way of adding flexibility. Uh, I do hear Dave and others, team members, comments about uh, we don't know what the bid will be. And the more funds that we have certain up front, there are some efficiencies in that uh, bidding process to have the money there. But that's how, this is just how mine was working. I was thinking, what's the total ask if it was in the 80% range where the CPA block comes in at 2 million and, and change and Amherst has already given 957, comes in around 1.6 or so. That's what I came up with, uh, give or take, um, which would be around 650 or so. Uh, I'm hesitant personally to go too low because I don't want the project to lose its uh, goal, uh, which is to give our athletes uh, in the community what they've been asking for for a very long time. And I sat in in all the previous meetings with all the athletes, all the directors, everybody going, we need this. What's it going to take? I know it's been a long time. So um, I think it makes sense for someone to make a motion with a dollar amount, whatever that might be, so that we can talk as a committee. I know some committee members have, have to depart. Uh, I don't have a dollar amount per se. I was thinking in the 650 based on my own calculations, based on the 80% hip shot, 50,000 50, plus or minus. Uh, the other thing that resonated for me was the comment that Dave Zomack made, which is to recognize that this is going to go through the finance committee and the town council. And they cannot award more money than we recommend, but they can reduce it. So they can reduce it if we don't get the 400,000 from the other schools, we don't think it's likely. They have the ultimate responsibility for awarding the funds. We recommend what we think uh, makes sense, but our recommendations cannot be increased. They can be decreased. So there's some flexibility in there. If we come in at a slightly higher amount, then might be ideal uh, You know, to allow some flexibility. They have the capacity to uh, adjust it if. You know, we should recommend what we think makes sense, but just that's a factor to understand that 
we're not actually the awarders, we're the um, recommenders of the awarders. It's, it's a slight distinction. Yes, Bob Saul. I, I was, this is going to be very choppy, so bear with me. I'm going to try to formulate a motion that incorporates both Doug's excellent comment and both Doug's excellent comments um, to create sort of a, a double backstop, I guess. But I'm going to actually recommend that we approve the 800 to fund the base proposal with the caveat that our CPAC dollars are last in the waterfall after the other funding sources, um, which I believe are the hurricane boosters, the other CPACs from the other towns, and then their dollars, and I'm not sure what else. But thank you, Bob. Uh, it might, instead of uh, waterfall, it may just be other sources of funds might be a preferred terminology. Uh, procedurally, I'm not sure if we're able to do that or not. I'm ignorant. <laughs> um, Holly, do you have any thoughts on the capacity for CPA to recommend funds, but to then say that they have to be used after other funds are utilized? I see you shaking your head. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not real clear on that one yeah. either. Yeah. Um, well, well, based on what Doug Slaughter said, I, there has to be an intertown agreement when they when they go through this so and it'd be it'd be part of that intertown agreement so what bob is is saying is we would put a contingency on our 800,000 that it would have to be the the first to be refunded if there was extra money i first of all hey if that's an amendment i accept it that's much more elegantly put Um, so, so Bob, did you make a motion? Is that correct? I, I did make a motion somewhere in that gibberish. Yes. Okay. Uh, would you like to phrase that motion again, based on what Matt said, or Matt, would you like to phrase what Bob said with your motion as a complete, so at least we have a clarity of understanding? Um, so I think what Bob was saying was that the AMO CPA committee would approve an additional 800,000 um, to go only toward the base uh, project as required and be with the contingency that um, this money would be the first to be returned if the uh, project came under bid. The, the reason I'm asking is we're not certain what the ad alternates are that are going to be bid. We don't know. That's yet to be determined. No, well, I, I guess I guess that's the question. Are we are we is uh, uh, in our motion? Are we including everything that was listed in the proposal? There's a spreadsheet, the page in the proposal which listed bid alternates. Are we including all of those? Are we including just the lighting? I don't know. The motion is for a dollar amount to support the project. That that's what's written. Yeah, that's yeah, but, but the, the dollar amount. But 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 Doug Marshall's point was that we sh we should support only the base project, not those additional things. And then if if the pro, I mean, I'm just this is not this is not necessarily my motion. This is what Bob is trying to say, I think. But um, and and what Here Doug you. was trying to say. And I'll call you in one moment, Doug. It, it, although there will be fewer ad alternates requested if there's fewer funds offered from Amherst. That's my understanding. Uh, Doug, you had um, your... I think that put the full project out to bid. So, Do you still have your hand up, Doug Marshall? Can, can I, I ask? Do. I do. I, I was trying to wait till Matt was finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm I'm just relying on the material in the presentation that we were given today, which had a page called Project Bid Alternates. Yep. And uh, I, you know, the previous page added up to the 4.16 million. 
And the, I assume all these potential project bid alternates are in addition to that. No, those are included. Okay, so I guess I didn't look at the previous page carefully enough, huh? These are potential savings, re reductions from the 4.4 million. Okay, well then that terminology is somewhat confusing to call them alternates. Well, as, potential bid alternates. As opposed to deducts. So anyway, okay. Um, you yeah. know, I think uh, with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that Michelle and Bob thought I had a good idea earlier, um, but I'm, I guess I kind of feel like we ought to just approve the 800,000 with some advice to town council that they consider carefully what we spend that money on and you know, uh, as they figure out what the alternates really should be, they can figure that out. Uh, you know, do they want to allow it to go toward uh, the walkway, you know, because the town's on town land anyway, or do they want to just, you know, be more strict? And um, they can work out, you know, we can, we can say, we recommend you authorize the 800, we also encourage you to, you know, to put some limits on this uh, and that we just buy what we really need to buy right now and that we find some way that feels fair to get our money back if there's excess money. And I, I, I'm not making another motion, but I, you know, I do, I do think we need to leave a little wiggle room for finance committee and town council um, I do know that town council uh, paid attention to the last meeting we had where we said, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll vote that, but we're really not so happy with the direction of the design. So, you know, they've come back to us. <laughs> and so uh, I want to be supportive too. Thank you, Doug. Um, I, I have some concern about our discussing base amounts, uh, you know, the base support, as you recognized, Doug, when you referenced it, because I think it creates some confusion in what the recommendation is, and it might make it difficult for town council to move forward if we uh, recommend something distinct from a singular dollar amount. I think we can add a comment such that, you know, if there's excess funds that Amherst get reimbursed, but I'm hesitant to uh, reference the base uh, dollar amount. Um, Holly, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, so I just want to just just try to make it a little clearer about the base bid versus alternates. So the intention is that we bid the entire project and we have enough money for the entire project. But if the costs are above and beyond what we have, we would basically have to throw everything out and start over again. So what you do is you start with a base bid and you say, and this is, we'll add the lighting and we'll add the fencing and we'll add this. If we have enough money, that's the entire project. But if we don't have enough money, we would take those things off. So when you say you only want to fund the base bid, you're saying right off the bat, you don't want lighting, you don't want this, you don't want that. Well, our intention is that we're going to get everything for this price tag, but if we can't get everything for that price tag, we're at least going to do the pieces that we can afford and then add on the additional pieces. So they're, they're, they are alternates, but they are also part of the full project. So if you say you only want to fund the base bid, you're saying if this entire project comes in and like we are we are doing great and our bids come in under $4 million, that you don't want to add the lighting, the fencing, those things that you're going to call an alternate. I don't think that's the the intention. I think the intention is more of if we do not have enough money to do everything, these are the things that we can clearly carve out and still get us a, a, a great project versus an excellent project. So if you say you only want to do the base bid, I think you're tying the hands of the council and the schools and the designer to give us that full, that full bid. Does that make it a little bit clearer? It does for me. Um, 
Bob Saul, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, yeah, Holly, thank you for that. It does for me too. So I was, I was, I'm not sure what the procedure is, but I wanted to modify my, my motion. Okay. But I have to withdraw my other motion first, I guess. Uh, right now, there's a single motion that has, we actually didn't second it, so you can withdraw it if you'd like, uh, and then we can proceed thereafter with a clean slate. Okay, I withdraw my other motion. Okay. Um, I I do have one comment before you make what I believe is going to be a motion. I think it would make sense for the committee to make a motion with a dollar amount and either second or as an addition to ask the, the school committee to uh, expedite applications with all regional, uh, other regional uh, towns for the uh, maximum that they can request. Um, in my mindset, that would be a request of funds that would either be 800,000 or 650,000 if my 80% was right. That's just my thought. I interrupted you, Bob, so, uh, sorry, but I just wanted to- I I'd, I'd like to hear before I go on what Michelle has to say. Very good. Um, I was going to ask Sam what that eighty percent was, and you said six fifty. Well, I, if it's okay, Bob, uh, I saw the dollar amount of four point four million. I saw a gap funding of what I determined to be one million forty thousand. Matt Kane says it's nine hundred and seventy thousand, give or take. Uh, I saw that. The differential there, um, subtracting the 957000 that Amherst has already contributed. Uh, we also can there's also another 900000 that the town council put in. That's the town council, not Amherst CPA, though, correct? Right. But if you're considering the town, the town I, of Amherst contribution as, as we could, as I wasn't. The, well, in my mind, in my mind, it's like the, 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 the town council and the CPA are both from the town of Amherst. Yeah. That would have a different amount then. Yeah. Which so would... It, well, in my mind, the, you could take the 4.4 million and then you can subtract off the 1.5 million from the schools and the 100,000 from the boosters. And that leaves you with um, 2.8 million. And then twenty percent of two point eight million would be five hundred and sixty thousand. Five hundred and sixty so what? Five hundred and sixty thousand, roughly. So, so Doug uh, Slaughter has has drafted requests to the three towns, adding up to four hundred and twenty thousand, which is about fifteen percent of the two point eight million. Compared, twenty percent would be more uh -huh. like five hundred and sixty thousand. So. 15% is not bad. It's not perfect. That's that's my approach. That's my take on it. The that. other question is what can really realistically be expected from the other towns. Uh, they had gotten requests previously of around 240,000, I believe. So how much of that would they actually contribute? And do we let it sit thereafter if we don't vote for it? Under your scenario, Matt, um, if it were 560, what is it? So what do you back into from the Amherst CPA in that scenario? Um, uh, well, so Pelham's already contributed 10,000. Um, so 550,000 out from 940, around, around 400,000. Okay. Um, uh, Michelle. So the 560, which is the lower end of that calculation, yep. and then more conservatively, 240 from the other towns is $800,000. Just noting how that math works out nicely. If Amherst were to recommend 560. Yes. And we were not to count on the 420, but rather 240 from the other towns. Yep. Uh, that is a scenario that would allow Amherst to contribute with the expectation of the other towns contributing to meet the 800. But we do need to recognize that the, uh, at least I recognize that the applicants are coming to Amherst CPA for 800,000 
but they separate from that, we're planning on asking additional funding from those other towns. So um, there's a $1 million gap approximately, uh, at not just the 800,000. Uh, and so under that scenario, there would be some of these bid alternates that would not occur, uh, that would be put off. And I guess that's the real question for the committee is, are they comfortable putting off? Uh, Dave Zomak suggested a single item such as the light, lighting, which would be 350 some odd thousand dollars as a means of re reducing the overall project. Uh, that's a simple way of looking at it to arrive at a conclusion. Um, and I think that's the issue that committee members need to face. Do they or don't they wish to have all the project items come in at one point in time or not? I just want it to get it done reoriented. And I want to give the uh, school and the project team uh, the flexibility to do what they can. But I do hear the concerns that were raised by some committee members in the town. Uh, Doug Marshall, you had your hand up next. Yeah, I guess I'm just feeling again that, you know, we're talking about these numbers like they're real. Yeah, exactly. And, and they're absolutely not. So, right. you know, if you're going to get down to, and the other the other piece of it, I mean, they're not real from a construction point of view, and they're not real politically yet because the the other towns haven't stepped up. So I think the real question is, do we want to give the the school committee team, Dave and Bob and Doug, enough confidence that there's going to be enough money? to do something in this direction that they're willing to pay the designer to draw it up that way and move forward. Because, you know, if, if they don't have that confidence, they shouldn't do that. They'll waste the design money. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Matt, is, you know, oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Doug. Well, I, I mean, in essence, it's, you know, do we want to make sure that this happens somehow? even if it's mostly our nickel. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Matt? Yeah, I guess I feel like I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, you're welcome to. That the CPA committee approved the additional 800,000 with the recommendation to the town council to um, look at this closely and potentially reduce it and the recommendation to the um the, the school department and school committee to pursue uh additional funding from the other towns to help out okay um the, say that one more time <laughs> that the MS CPA committee approved the additional 800,000 with the recommendation for the MS town council to potentially reduce this uh, if, if, if possible, um, because they'll be considering it in the future with additional information. And also a recommendation to the school committee and the school department to pursue additional funding from the other member towns and potentially the boosters, if, if possible, to um, to to support. I I would consider a friendly amendment to that instead of saying if possible, if deemed appropriate. In other words, they can look at it and see if it's appropriate. I don't know what others think about that. Any thoughts on that? They're, They're going to do what they think is appropriate anyway. Right, but it's. Okay. Um, if possible, Sam, I think that's a good addition to get formalize his Matt's language just slightly. It's up to Matt. It's his amendment. It's his uh, motion. Well, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to make them do it basically. So uh, trying to make to... them reduce it. Oh, um, we, were you talking about the town council or the school school department? Town council. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the town council, if appropriate. I, I thought you would. I'm happy to change what, Ed, as you said. So uh, would anyone wish to second a motion or offer 
I see a hand went up quick. So we have a motion. As seconded as uh, amended with the uh, deemed appropriate in lieu of, if possible. Um, discussion. I see Dave Williams, you had your hand up. No, it was up for the motion. Okay. Yes. We do have a motion and we do have a second uh, discussion. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion so far. Uh, I was trying to expedite the, the meeting, but this is a, an, an, you know, not a, not a simple discussion. So, um, yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so other comments from committee members on the motion as offered for the discussion purpose. I understand what Doug Marshall is saying, and I do have that concern. I do want to personally make sure that this goes to uh, fruition with a reoriented 3C. I would hate to see uh, the project get derailed in the divine design phase due to shortcomings of dollar amounts. Um, uh, yeah, I came into the meeting thinking eight hundred thousand or six fifty. That's just what I was coming in, but I don't want to derail the um, forces that have been driving this project forward for essentially six years now, approximately. Um, so I, I share my own motivation in terms of giving them the capacity to to make it happen for our athletes for the kids, uh, which to me is what it's about. Uh, other comments, anyone? No, okay. Um, we have a motion. Uh, I guess we should read it one more time. Matt, would you be willing to uh, reiterate it with the... Yeah, no, I, didn't, I didn't actually write it down, but... Um that the MOCPA committee approve an additional 800,000 with the um, recommendation that the Amherst Town Council consider re re reducing it as appropriate. Was that the right wording? If, if, appro if, if appropriate. To, to the Amherst School Department and School Committee to pursue additional funding from the other member towns. It's actually the regional school committee. Uh, the regional school committee. Uh, I would add, uh, uh, consider or uh, recommend the award of 800,000 uh, for the project as submitted in pursuit of option 3C, um, just for clarity purposes. Um, and then the rest of what Matt said. Okay. Um, Doug Marshall, I believe you seconded it. Is that edition of the In Pursuit of Options 3C uh, an accepted uh, edit to the amendment, to the motion for you? Yes. So we have a motion and we have a second. Um, any further discussion? I'd like to go ahead and call a vote. Uh, uh, Bob Saul. Aye. Matt Kane. Aye. Dave Williams. Aye. Pardon? Couldn't hear you. Who? Aye. You're voting aye? Yes. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't hear. Uh, Doug Marshall. Aye. Robin Fordham. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Uh, I will vote aye. Uh, so the motion passes unanimously seven to zero. Um, uh, I'd like to thank the um, presenters, Doug, Dave, Bob, uh, as well as the team members who aren't here. And uh, Holly, thank you for clarifying the uh, what it means regarding a base bid versus a um, uh, uh, bid alternates. I think it was helpful to the committee. So the, the next item on our agenda, if I can find it here, one moment, is uh, the calendar. 
schedule for the fall. I sent the calendar out to committee members. I'm not sure which committee members have had an opportunity to look at it or not. It is essentially the same calendar that we had last year adjusted for the dates. Um, Holly, do we have the capacity to share my screen or do you have the capacity to put the calendar on the screen for people to look at? Uh, I can do it with my screen if if you want. I can share my screen. I'm seeing a nod at that. Okay. Yeah, sorry. It would be better. I it's, it's That's difficult fine. for me. So let me just you can all see my very busy desktop. You should uh, be able to. Sam, I think we're gonna say thank you to everybody. We heard you loud and clear, and and Doug and Bob and I are gonna get to work on those other funds. So thank you all for your Oh, thank you all very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, uh, Doug. And thank you, Bob. So I'm uh, opening up the calendar, which is on my screen right here. I don't know if anyone can see my screen yet. Uh, can anyone see my screen? No. Okay. So let me complete that process. Uh, share. How about now? Now we can see my screen, it says. So this is the calendar that I sent out to committee members recently that mirrors last year. Uh, the one distinction is the commencement of the announcement. I wrote down next week because we did not have the application and the CPA page with the information live until just this past week. And thank you very much, Holly, for uh, getting uh, the town staff to act upon that. Um, the balance of this uh, schedule that we have in front of us mirrors what we did last year. I'd like to ask committee members for any thoughts they have on this. Uh, Doug Marshall, I saw your hand was up previously. Is that in relation to this? There it is. Doug, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the uh, planning board hasn't voted on its new representative to CPAC yet. Yep. So it's not clear whether I'll be part of this. So, uh, you know, I have no comment on the, this calendar since I don't know whether I'll be uh, representing the planning board. Well, if uh, as a potential non-planning board member, if you saw anything that you thought might make sense to change, uh, uh, it would certainly be welcome to be heard. Well, you don't have any Wednesday night meetings, so there won't be any conflict with planning board. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Uh, Bob Saul. Sam, the, the um, calendar looked fine to me. I have to sprint, so I'm going to cut out and uh, thank you very much everyone that was a great discussion I thought. thank you so much for sticking with us bob i know you had a commitment and you hung in there to assist the conversation the, the track is more important <laughs> thank you bob thank you okay bye robin oh yeah i just had a, one quick comment was that i remember that our last meeting does end up being quite close to the holiday so i realized that we need to have those meetings in there but maybe we could be mindful of that as we have our deliberations to see if we could end on the 12th instead of the 19th. <laughs> uh, well, uh, some recommendations that I heard from one or two committee members was that uh, in terms of doing the meetings that uh, be a little bit more attentive to the time when we're running on. Uh, and there are some methods of doing that, such as announcing uh, here's our intended time ending for a particular uh topic agenda item, uh, although you never know with these, but uh, point taken, uh, Robin, and we'll see. Uh, others? Uh, Holly, I have one question to you, for you. Do you think it's this date of August 6th, which I believe is next Tuesday, is viable for getting town staff to send an announcement out uh, to the town lister, putting it on the new town news so that community members can see this and sending an email or at a minimum can a request be made because uh, we're a little bit behind what we've done in the past uh, based on other circumstances. But I, I think it's important that we provide as much notice as we can for potential applicants. 
So you're just you're just referring to the simple CPA applications will begin being accepted on Monday, September 2nd. Correct. And a link yeah. that might say it's going to be live. In the past, we had like a sample application at that link, but I know it's not going to be live until uh, September 2nd or thereabouts. Yeah, that's, that's, def that's definitely doable. That's a... Mm -hmm. Once it gets live, I'll try, instead of having a meeting in uh, August, as we've done in the past, that there wasn't significant attendance, uh, maybe just a brief uh, screen share for potential applicants saying, here's how you should review and look at the application. And we could put that on the website uh, for them. That can't occur until the uh, application is live, but it means that we won't need to meet in August. Uh, so, um, I don't think we need to vote on this calendar. Uh, we can just put it up, uh, if, uh, yeah. um, it's just a draft for sure. And it, it can change. Um, yeah. I personally would like to mirror Robin's comments that I think that having a CPA meeting five days before Christmas, six days before Christmas is hopefully not going to be needed but if it is needed i would personally recommend that that be moved to the first week in january an alternate solution as well if we ran over is we could conceivably do it a day different than a thursday to have a couple meetings close to each other in the same week but i hear what you're saying and uh, uh that would be the uh, the hope that we would accomplish it without the 19th and or first of january uh, and we can adjust it. So, uh, but it is just draft, so it's yeah. it's fine as stands. Okay. Uh, so thank you. I don't have any topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate forty eight hours before the meeting. I do want to remind uh, committee members that our liaisons from the very the five different committees to ask their committees to appoint someone formally uh, to the C as a CPA liaison representative uh, and to notify the town of that as soon as they can at the next meetings that exist. Uh, it's important because there's a time frame. Uh, unlike the at-large members, there's a need to go through the approval process each time. I, I think Paul can do it directly, but he may, it, I think it has to get approved by uh, thereafter by uh, either CRC or maybe the town council. I'm not sure of that, but the, the action item for the committee members is to bring it to the attention of your own committees and or try to get it on the agenda to appoint somebody. I do know that one person on our committee has indicated that they may not be uh, returning. Uh, is that still the case uh, in terms of conflicts on a Wednesday versus a Thursday? Um, Are you talking about me, Sam? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we have appointed Jason Dorney okay. to be our ConCom representative okay. next year. I have a word conflict. So I, I would like to thank Michelle for her service on our committee. It's been a pleasure and I uh, greatly appreciated your input, thoughts, and attention. Uh, I share the same thoughts, Doug, should you not return. I hope that you will. I hope that all the members will return. Uh, but if not, uh, thank you so much for your participation and patience. Uh, it is an important committee for uh, the town, and the liaisons are very important in sharing the thoughts of their own committees. So um, with that, I'll just remind and ask again that the liaisons ask their committees it has to go through a process before it's formalized by the town. Thank you so much for arriving and taking time out of the summer to do this important meeting today. Um, and with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 746 PM. Thank you all. Thanks everyone. Sam. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Sam. Nice working with you guys. Bye. Could someone send me a template for these minutes, or is there not a template? Um, I will send some previous minute drafts. That's what we use. I, You may or may not like the one I have. Uh, I'll send it to you, though. I mean, really, okay. it's the previous. I don't have a template. What I do is I take the previous minutes and I edit them. Um, it's not actually a template, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a couple of minutes, uh, okay. and you can 
uh, probably tomorrow, uh, and we can that's, go from that's there. That's soon enough. All right. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, all.